All right, um, I am Valerie Karam Thompson. Um, I work for Pythian. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about my experience of creating a large Cassandra cluster using automation, specifically CSTAR. Um, I will say if you are interested in seeing the uh, live demo of Docker, um, the, the demo is not going to happen today for technical reasons. So I guess that beats um, the live demo cutting off in the middle of the demo, uh, but just a heads up regarding that. So I'm going to assume that everybody here um, knows what Cassandra is. Um, there are a couple of things about Cassandra design that I do want to point out because they're relevant to the uh, upgrade maintenance. Um, so the first, of course, looking at this diagram that I took from the Apache documentation, um, Cassandra is a distributed database. So data is stored across nodes, um, in our case, a lot of nodes. Um, and it's stored in more than one place. And that has some implications that we'll talk about in a second. The other thing is, um, you know, running a Cassandra cluster, you have a certain amount of operational knowledge. Um, there are two things that are important uh, for or relevant for this type of maintenance. Uh, one is the disk utilization, and the other is the general availability. Of course, there are other operational concerns, but these are the ones um, to think about going into this. Um, so for Cassandra disk space, of course, um, don't run out of space, right? Make sure you have the monitoring. You need it for compaction. You need it for snapshots. You need it for SS table upgrades. Um, and you need more than you might imagine you need for this maintenance. We needed 60% um, overhead. And uh, thinking back to the diagram of Cassandra, Cassandra can tolerate one node being down at a time, but usually not more than that. So um, this will have implications for CSAR, as we'll see in a second, but this is something you definitely want to monitor, um, just as an aside. This is a key feature of distributed databases. Um, to deal with maintenance, what we usually do is rolling restarts, and this can be done for upgrades, um, configuration changes, or just any hardware changes. Okay, so we can automate um, a variety of operations, including upgrades. This automation can be done with custom scripts. One frequent example of, of a type of scripting is Ansible. And we use Ansible too to do maintenance, uh, upgrades and other kinds of maintenance. You have to code in those operational concerns that I mentioned above, the idea of rolling restarts, the idea of making sure that not more than one node is down at a time, um, the idea of monitoring for disk utilization. As an aside, if you um, are running Cassandra in containers, Kubernetes operators are a really exciting way to um, make sure you're using that operational knowledge because they, they tend to build a lot of that in. Um, in this case, we were not using Cassandra on containers, though. I'll talk a little bit about the CSTAR features. Um, so this is a community tool. It's contributed by Spotify, of course. Thank you, Spotify. Um, I did see on a on a message board that someone mentioned they'd never seen it work outside of Spotify. Um, clearly, I have. I've seen it work in several times outside of Spotify. Um, it's one of many community tools in use for Apache. Um, of course, we also have Reaper and Medusa, um, thanks to the community, and all those allow us to uh, run operations against Apache Cassandra. The dependencies for CSTAR are very minimal. Um, you need on the jump host, you just need Python 3. Um, and of course, the package, package manager makes that easier as well. Um, when you're thinking about installing CSTAR, you don't have to install it on the nodes. So don't, I know there are many environments are still struggling with the Python 2, Python 3 overlap. Um, don't feel like you have to upgrade all your Python to 3. You just need a simple jump host that's running CSTAR. Um, you could even just spin up a VM for that. Uh, most commonly, you're going to use an existing operational jump host or bastion. The Cassandra nodes themselves only need no tool. Since this is installed with Cassandra typically, um, that dependency is met. A big thing you need is networking. 
um, you require SSH connectivity, um, and that has to be done non-interactively, so usually done SSH keys. Again, this doesn't mean that CSTAR has to be on a node. Typically, your operational jump host will have that kind of networking. So CSTAR is designed to run commands in a distributed way. That's really all it, well, that's all it does, um, except for a, a bit of smartness I'll tell you about in a second. Um, but it's, it's really dumb in regards to the commands, right? It's only going to do what you tell it to do. For example, there aren't Cassandra um, operations built into the tool. You couldn't do something like C star cleanup and expect it to clean up your nodes. You have to C star run and then get a command. In this instance, you would do something like node tool cleanup. And also just typical commands. They don't have to be Cassandra commands. So you could create files. The part it's not dumb about um, is in regards to Cassandra topology, specifically the token distribution. Um, it's able to run in parallel across, across data centers because it understands that concept. And it knows, um, you know, thinking back to the operational knowledge, it knows that it wait for one node to do that before it proceeds with the next. It can manage data centers of different sizes. So this is the part where uh, C star really shines. There's three ways you can pass code to CSTAR. Um, you can run a distinct task. You can run a custom script, if you have a list of tasks, or you can create a custom command. So let's look at examples of those. Here's an example of a distinct task. So with this, I'm using CSTAR to run a command, which will create files on all of my nodes in my cluster um, called file.txt. I'm feeding it a seed host, and through that seed host, CSTAR will detect the topology and know what all the nodes of my cluster are. In this one, I'm using CSTAR PAR, and I'll talk a little bit about the difference between CSTAR and CSTAR PAR in a little while. But in this one, I'm passing in a custom script. The script in this case was named test-configs.sh, and you can see the um, and the contents of that file below is just a bash script. Um, I'm passing in some SSH options. I'm uh, echoing something to the screen and the logs, and then I'm sending an SSH command. So again, I've defined a list of tasks that CSTAR will then pass. Um, well, CSTAR part is a little different, but in any case, that will run across all of the nodes in my cluster. One more thing to notice here is that um, I've I pass in the option no done pause time 30. That just gives us a little breathing space between the, um, the jobs as they're running across the cluster. So in the examples we've seen, um, you'll see that by default, the CSTAR command is run. Other than that, the only other two commands that you can run are cleanup jobs and continue. Um, and we'll see an example of cleanup jobs in just a second. The continue is just to continue a job that's been paused. If you wanted to create a custom command, though, you would just create that um, script in something like Bash or Python and then add it to your commands folder under C star. For example, looking back at that command that we wanted to run before the C star cleanup, we could find a Bash um, script that would have a list of tasks to accomplish what we expect when we run C star cleanup. I'm taking this example from the documentation because we didn't do this. Um, so here, the custom command is called puppet-upgrade-cassandra. And so I'm calling that command from C star. This is, a, is, again, from the documentation, an example of that script. I'll point out a couple of things. Up at the top, you've got a list of uh, comments. In those comments, you can see there are default options uh, options that are being passed in, and there's some help task in the form of the description. This command, uh, this custom command does four tasks. It does a snapshot, runs configuration management, restarts Cassandra, and then upgrades the SS tables. So if there's one part of CSTAR that has um, the most, that you would have the most control over, it's in this parallelism. So by default, C-Star is going to run in parallel, um, and it avoids that 
token overlap that it's detected when it first starts. Um, you can control this with the strategy option. Um, the co two common ones are strategy all and strategy one. So when we were doing verification steps, we were fine using strategy all because those weren't very impactful. When we wanted to do the upgrade or the SS table upgrade, we reverted to strategy one to give it a little less impact to the cluster. You can also control it um, by using the options of TC parallel, data center obviously, or cluster parallel. Here's an example of what the output looks like. Um, so this command was used to look in the data directory and find files that were um, other than a format that we expected. And so you can see, first of all, it gives you a job ID. I'll talk about that in a second. It's running that default uh, script, which is run.sh. If you were running a custom script, you would actually see that it was running your custom script. Um, and then it spits back some of the options, default options, things you've passed in. And then the lower part of this is loading the cluster topology, preheating the cache, and doing the endpoint mapping. Um, so here you see where CSTAR is telling you that it's doing that topology detection. It's determining all of the nodes that are in your cluster. If there's any part, um, if you ever run CSTAR and this part um, lags, and you feel like it's not completing, um, first of all, it does take quite a while because it's got to get all that information. But uh, two hints, one, make sure that your networking is set correctly and make sure that you're using the most recent version of CSTAR. And CSTAR provides a mini dashboard of status. So here you see a key up at the top with symbols um, and then below, you can see that this is a test cluster and there's only one data center and it has four nodes. All four of those nodes are executing the CSTAR job. And then this is what it looked like when it's finished. Um, so all four of them are finished. So now you see the symbol has changed to um, done and they're up. And then we also get that job ID. I bolded that um, so you can see that that output is shown again. So here's what it would look like, um, or here's what it did look like in, a in the larger cluster. Um, so you can see here that some of the nodes have finished, so they're done and up. Some of them are executing, so they're an asterisk. And then some indicated by periods are waiting, so nothing is happening on those right now. Also notice here that data center four is larger than the other data centers. I'll come to that in a second. So remember that job ID. Um, you can use that job ID to look in CSTAR job, which is the log directory. Underneath the jobs folder, you'll have a bunch of folders, with your job IDs, one for each job that you run with CSTAR. And then under that, you'll have the host names that were involved in that job. The file I'm for is named out. Um, and so here, what I've done is my CSTAR job asked for disk utilization. And I'm just checking to make sure we have enough overhead for the maintenance that we're about to do. Okay, uh, so why did we choose CSTAR? There's three main reasons that you would use something like CSTAR, um, which is a community tool over developing your own scripts. So um, a script that's been used in different systems has the advantage of being um, hardened against production. Uh, another consideration that's really important is usually often um, these kinds of custom scripts are passion projects, right? So if the developer ever leaves, usually there's nobody to pick that up. And um, also, you know, they, they tend to be not maintained very well. So then you have to end up rewriting the custom script. And then another concern is that it's a great way to contribute back to the community for all the tools that we're given, right? Um, even if you're doc uh, contributing documentation or issues or doing pull requests, this is a way to give back to the community. So for these reasons, we chose PSTAR for this project. Okay, I'll walk through the upgrade process. Um, so because CSTAR was developed in a single company before it was open source, I, I found that reading the documentation, there were assumptions that I just didn't understand. And so I did a lot of testing um, just to understand the functionality, um, how it broke, how it didn't break, um, where the output was, that kind of thing. 
And then after that, um, of course, we tested it in a staging environment, which was a little bit closer to production, had a little bit closer to production workload and data size. So by the time we got to production, of course, most of those kinks were worked out. We understood how the tool worked. We understood not only uh, where the output was, but what it meant. Um, it still needed some babysitting, so I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when you're running any kind of long running job, you obviously want to use screen, but there's another reason you want to do that for CSTAR. If you think about it, CSTAR is run from the jump host, but the, the work itself is being run on the node. And so if for some reason you lose your status and something goes wrong, you have to look at all your nodes to figure out what to stop. Um, so running that in screen allows you to have that status available even if you close your laptop um, so you can see what nodes need to be stopped. I'm sorry, what jobs on which nodes need to be stopped. Okay, so we have some pre-checks. Um, this is typical of any maintenance. Um, we did this several days in advance just in case we needed to do some changes. We verified we had the right host um, permissions. So not only those SS permissions that I talked about, but also, um, you know, does can I get to the authentication server? Can I get to the nodes? Can I get to the configuration server? Those kinds of things. Making sure the software is in place and making sure that the scripts um, that we wrote were in place on the job so everything was ready for us. And here we did run some CSTAR jobs. Um, so one was to check that disk space that I talked about earlier. Um, this Again, these verification steps were done with strategy all because they weren't very impactful and it was okay to run them against all of the nodes. Well, um, we also wanted to make sure that there weren't any SS tables left behind from a previous upgrade, just in case, um, just because that causes a bit of messiness. Um, so I just wanted to make sure all the SS tables were in the current version format um, for the Cassandra version running on the servers. Um, then the snapshots, we've run into um, several problems where you know, get in the middle of a maintenance and either you have a disk utilization problem or you have a recovery problem and there are, all of a sudden there are old snapshots that nobody knows about and then you have to have conversations about whether you can get rid of them. Um, so we've just learned, just go see what the snapshots exist on the servers. So this is just a way to make sure um, either there weren't any snapshots or that, um, that we at least knew what they were. This is, uh, so we upgraded from starting from 2.0. So um, this is uh, a custom command. We couldn't use the nodal command to use the snapshot. And then the day of the maintenance, um, typical stuff, send the maintenance notification. We had the benefit of having a really nice dashboard that showed systems and application information. Um, so we turned that on um, and then prepared the configuration files. So that they were ready to apply via automation. Then we did some backups. Um, so these first ones we're not using CSTAR, um, but I've shown them anyways. We did those on a single host. Um, and then, then uh, we did use CSTAR to do the snapshots. So I really like using CSTAR here um, because it was possible to do those snapshots across the entire cluster. And then the upgrade. Um, so using CSTAR PAR here, um, so the configuration host was not accessible from the node. So I told you I would tell you the difference between CSTAR and CSTAR PAR. So CSTAR is uh, running the command, you're running it from the jump host, but it's running the commands on the node. CSTAR PAR is running the command on the jump host with knowledge of the node. So in this case, with, since we could not reach the configuration management server from the nodes, um, we had to run it from the jump host, but we did use CSTAR so we would have the benefit and could loop through all of the um, nodes that were detected. Um, so in this case, um, you know, we ran a test mode configuration management uh, statement just to be sure um, before this was started that uh, it was going to send the right version and that it was the, the that it was working, and then the um, the upgrade Cassandra uh, Bash script 
did a list of things. Uh, Stop Cassandra applied the new binary and configuration files and then started Cassandra. And both of these we did with strategy one um, so that there would only be one per data center. After that was done, um, the, so the entire cluster was upgraded. Uh, then of course you have to go and do the um, upgrade of the SS table format. So before I jumped into that really long running process, I did want to make sure that we had the right version across all the nodes. Um, so usually this is something I really liked about CSTAR. If you know if you were doing this with hundreds of nodes, you would either have to do a spot check, or maybe you have to go do all the servers, or you send some SSH statement. Um, it was really easy just to CSTAR you know, send it out to all the servers, ask for the no tool version, and then grep through the output log. Um, so it was very fast. Check the disk space again, just in case we had changed from the prefix, and then upgrade SS table to the current version format. So for this, um, we actually did use a custom script for a variety of reasons. It wasn't too much different in logic from um, how CSTAR works, but if you were gonna use CSTAR, I've included the statement that you would use. And then after the burn-in, um, after everyone agreed that the application was fine, then it was just a few cleanup steps, uh, close remaining screen sessions, and remove the old snapshots. And then um, I told you that CSTAR can do two things natively, or three things natively, run, uh, continue, and clean up jobs. So the clean up jobs will remove all of, the, all of those um, log files in the CSTAR jobs directory. By default, it does everything over a week old. For us, the burn-in was longer than a week, so it took all of them anyways, but you can adjust that with the option max job. So changes for next time. Um, because once we got to a certain level in environments, um, we didn't want to make any more changes before production. There were things that I realized going along that I would um, do a little bit better next time. Um, so one is to combine more of those automation steps. It would be nice to also have automate automation of the verification steps. Um, so combining those would be great. Um, and I would also, we didn't have time to put Medusa in this environment, but I would use Medusa for the snapshot. Okay, six lessons learned. Um, so again, uh, if, if C-Star isn't quite working the way you expect it to, consider using C-Star PAR. Um, and I've already explained that we didn't have access to the configuration management server from the nodes, and that's why it was used. The CSTAR job folder, um, this is especially useful if you're using screen because um, your output you know, will scroll off, you can't copy and paste it. And anyways, it's nice to have a history. So um, you know, definitely use that CSTAR jobs. You can tail that out file um, and see exactly what CSTAR is doing. The C star output, I found it was too quiet. Um, and so at some point early in testing the functionality, um, we ran into some errors and just didn't know why it wasn't working. Um, it wasn't in the logs. Um, and because as I should have said, the logs don't really give you information about um, errors in C star. They give you the output of your job. Um, so anyway, turning on that verbose flag gives you a lot more error reporting. Um, and anyways, it's going into your job log, so um, it's better to have the information for history anyway. Um, this was a bit of a logic fail on my part, but um, one of the things I asked CSTAR to do was to go to all the nodes and make sure that a certain file didn't exist. Um, of course, if it didn't exist, then CSTAR considered that the job had failed. Um, so the quick fix for that is to um, you know, just add a, a, a line count at the end of the, um, the request so you at least get a zero back. Um, one thing about CSTAR is it, it stops if it fails. So you're kind of waiting, wondering why the job's not completing. This may help you. Um, this is documented. It, it's, it wasn't a surprise. 
um, what was a surprise was that because I had to hit the configure or the authentication server so many times and applying configuration management, eventually the authentication server thought I was um, stopping it, I guess, or um, or trying to break into something. So it locked me out. Um, the first time this happened, I was about maybe 50 nodes into the process. And um, so I went to the node and did the configuration manually and then um, restarted the node. I was really worried that I was going to have to go back and restart the C-star job. But the really cool thing is that it just picked up. It just kept going. Um, so I have a huge advantage of C-star. And then just to note, it really is topology aware. Um, this is obviously documented. It's kind of the point of CSAR. Um, but until I saw it live, I didn't realize how cool it was that it it did balance. Remember that uh, fourth data center had a lot more nodes in it. If we had just been doing kind of a round robin and um, doing them one at a time on the data centers, then that last data center would have had a lot of restarts at the end. So it was really nice to see that it was balancing it in what appeared to me um, to be kind of balancing on percentages of nodes per data center. Um, so anyway, the jobs for each data center, and I found that to be a really good advantage. Okay, um, that is my presentation. I will come back to the chat window and see if you have any questions. Thank you, Nate, for the record or for the um, announcement. Any questions about CSTAR or our upgrade process? Um, about Cassandra? About Pythian? Thank you. Thank you for coming to the presentation. Has anyone out there used CSTAR or are looking at it? Um, so your question, can you compare or contrast it with Ansible? Um, so Ansible is another one of these tools that is dumb. It just does what you tell it to do. Um, kind of like I described C star is doing. Um, the thing of you have to include the, uh, so the smart part about C star is that it does that topology check and it makes sure that you don't have more than one node down. Uh, you know, for your token range, and it makes sure that the application is not going to have downtime. Um, you can certainly do that with Ansible. We have done that with Ansible, but you have to code that part in. Um, so it's just an additional step. Ansible can certainly be used to do this. You just have to to give it a lot more code to do that. C Star is um, designed to deal specifically with Cassandra clusters. Okay, um, I don't see any more questions, so thank you all for coming. <laughs>